Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, I'm Anna Ruth Costa, and I'm the course leader of the BA Owns Architecture here at Lancaster University. And I would like to share like this idea of seeing the buildings as treasures. And because we, if you do that, then that will enable us to have um, having those buildings to have one life, but then multiple cycles, so extending their life th through those cycles. So. I would like to start this talk by asking you to think um, about um, one thing. So what I would like you to ask you is, if you think that the hearth natural resources are your teeth, and if the hearth is your mouth, so you can imagine now that we have already extracted at least one third of your teeth, and probably we extracted the front ones because the rear ones are more difficult to reach. Um, on top of that, then you can't um, drink water anymore. It's difficult to sip. It's, the, it's maybe difficult to eat an apple. It's difficult to feed yourself. So you can start thinking almost like how um, the hearth is feeling. So hopefully no one is leaving the room now to see the dentist. But um, um, another thing that I would like to share with you is um, a novel written by a, um, a Portuguese writer called José Saramago, and it's called Blindness. And that novel was also converted to a movie, so you can watch it, um, by Fernando Meirelles. And the story is about um, a city that gets affected by an epidemic of blindness and illustrates quite well uh, a disaster's potential and bringing out the best and the worst uh, and the worst of people in people. So uh, I think, and luckily we are not blind, uh, but at some point I think we also choose not to see what's around us. And so I think um, what I would like to share with you today is thinking about our planet Earth and the amount of um, extraction and different raw materials we are extracting every day um, on the planet. And then we make it worse, so we travel all those, all those materials across the world, uh, moving them from one place to another, not really thinking if we are taking the most effect effective solution on that. And then after using them, after having them on our buildings, we end up like getting them into the landfill and um, getting back, but then they go into a way that they waste all their potential and they are all mixed and we can't use them anymore. So it's almost like we are trying to make this world uh, a worse place to live. So imagine that now someone tells you that you can't extract any more uh, raw materials from, from the planet. And then we all need together to build uh, a net zero future for, for us. And uh, to do that, I think one of the key things is about um, getting everyone involved. So if we think about the architecture, engineering, construction industry, one of the things is bringing everyone together and working uh, uh, and with the alignment. But also, we need to bring new skills to those people because um, it's not just continuing to do what we have done. We need it to work even more together. There's loads of things to, to address when we are approaching a project. So then uh, we need to learn how to collaborate with each other. And these are some of the, the skills that um, I think we should be um, investing. Uh, so in terms of being more resourceful, thinking about what we really need, what we, we don't need, what are we going to do, what are we doing with our resources, being frugal in the way that we can reduce our needs as well, um, and then also um, promoting this, this uh, more sustainable world for our, all of us. And one of the measures that we can have is thinking about having more renewable materials, as we've seen today, and exploring those, um, those avenues in construction as well. And then the other thing is also using the materials that we have already in place. So if in one hand we develop more renewable materials that we can then regenerate in a sustainable way, then on the other hand we have the buildings already in existence in our buildings so that we can make the most of them. And getting the balance right in order to design our future across these two um, avenues. And um, 
Another thing is, if you start thinking about a building, uh, an existing build, as a, really, a real treasure, um, then we can also think about those pre-redevelopment and pre-demolition audits uh, as almost like a really treasure's way of seeing things. So imagine that you go to a building and you can't really see things, but actually if we have time and if we go there carefully in a curious mind, you can look with all the details and you can see those things almost like hunting those treasures in the building and trying to retrieve them carefully. And then we need to think about how we can disassemble them in a careful way, that we can move them from one place to another. Um, then we can also maybe see who is the best person to take half, to look after them, to keep them in reuse, maybe to repair them. Um, loads of skills that we lost on the way, like in terms of uh, art, uh, arts and crafts, in terms of how we deal with those materials, how can we keep them in the market. And it, this is not something new. We have been doing that for ages, but suddenly we almost like we forgot, we lost that, and we need to retrieve that knowledge. Um, Another thing is also thinking about the feasibility studies that architects do. And um, we approach a project uh, and then we consider, OK, what are the solutions? What can we do? But if we have different feasibility studies and if we consider what's the essential, it's not just about responding to a brief. It's not just about addressing the client's needs, but also bringing an extra level and considering different um, um, levels in this case. So it's about understanding what are the whole life cycle carbon implications in a project, what's the contextual approach, uh, what do we think is best or um, worse for that case, if we have any local materials that we can use, if we have local suppliers. Um, and then, of course, having that ethical approach in thinking maybe this or that one. So being thoughtful about that and reconsidering the way we approach a feasibility study is really important. And of course, then that comes back to what are the possibilities uh, when we approach that project, when we approach that building, what can we do? We can reuse it, we can repair it, we can refurbish it, but also trying to maximize and protect and avoiding um, the down cycle of those materials. And an extra thing is also there's loads of challenges. It's not just positive things. Um, and um, one of the things is about storage. We need to find a place to, to keep them. Uh, we need to certify some of those materials to keep them in use. Uh, we need also to think about the warranties of those materials and then insure them. And all of these are really complicated things because you need to go through the policies. You need to think about who is uh, liabil uh, liability involved on these things. So. But instead of seeing these as a challenge, we have good examples of different materials that have already achieved this. And um, for instance, the steel reuse is one of those cases. But then you can also see different um, markets emerging. And I think it's about seeing the value on those existing materials then it makes, us, uh, makes all of this work worth. But actually, in this scenario, you can't extract more raw materials. So that's the only way forward. So uh, to wrap up um, uh, in terms of the presentation and what I was saying and thinking about all this idea, um, I would like to kind of everyone leaves today with the idea that we can do something different and we can rethink the way we use our raw materials in the planet, um, thinking about um, handing carefully all the materials, almost all those, those treasures that we want to protect and we want to keep for us, and um, getting these um, almost like uh, things that we hand over to each other as a precious thing to keep. And, and then through material passports, you can also keep the history of those um, materials and you know that maybe that material came from that place and had that story in life, but then it's part of my life as well because I'm sharing it. So. Um, and then those little stories build like our existence um, in the planet. And uh, my mom, loads of times, she says that we don't belong to this world. So hopefully, through this approach, then we can live it better than we, we, we found it. So we still have a, a thing to do as well. Um, and then also, just to finish, thinking about those buildings as treasures because they are the ones that are protecting us. So we also need to look after them in order to be more protected. 
Um, just to finish, so I have this last quote from Michael Braungart from the book uh, Cradle to Cradle. So, a misuse of material resources is not just a suicidal for the future human generation, but also catas catastrophic for the future of life. So, let's keep our buildings and make them as a treasure as well. Thank you very much.